What's up guys, welcome back to Rebrand and Safety. In today's episode, we are talking to a brand new health and safety professional. What is that? Well, I'll do the intro and then I'll explain. The problem in safety isn't deviation, it's complexity. Health and safety has gone mad. Health and safety is trying to unpick having gone mad in the past. There's no one solution and one problem. The problem is that we are looking for one solution. Does the structure of the team allow them to flourish? Feel safe enough to be uncomfortable. The environment defines our behaviors. People aren't the problem, they're the solution. Rebranding safety, crushing the stereotype. Brought to you by Risk Fluent. Okay guys, Rebranding safety, doing exactly what it says on a tin. Welcome back, welcome to the podcast. We are challenging the perceptions of health and safety. We are changing those kind of, no wait, we are. It's because you're here, mister, that's why, putting me off. We are challenging those over the top practices of health and safety and changing the perception of it as well. We do that through long form conversations on this podcast and tips and tricks, how to's and vlogs and keynotes, etc. the whole shebang over on YouTube as well. So if you listen on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and then the bell and all those other buttons. If you're on Spotify, you can hit follow, follow the leader, leader, you know, all that malarkey. Um, and all the other buttons as well, if it remotely looks positive, and it will help me get bigger, which is good, because I like to be big. Anyway, let's talk about today's guest. What's up guys, welcome back to Rebound and Safety. Today we've got an interesting guest, and that's like genuinely really interesting. It's a like pretty much brand new safety professional. A person who kind of, to use his words, has kind of suffered through safety as a tradie, as a tradesman, um, through the years working in construction sites, and then decided, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna be a health safety professional. So he's pretty much like brand new into this industry, into this profession, and kind of was just really excited to talk to him about kind of, you know, at its rawest form of like, what was it like being you know, being the kind of reciprocant of safety advice, etc., and why you decided to to kind of join our industry. Well, let's be honest, it is it does come with a brand. There's not a lot of people coming on. In fact, the Irish last time I was at the Congress in uh, in February, the guy from the Irish was there, and it was something crazy like seventy or eighty percent of them of our profession is going to retire in five years. So we need like new people, fresh people. She was quite young as well. Well, there's his name. That's his name. Today's guest is Stephen Ashby. Um, he's like coming out of the woodwork on LinkedIn as well. So make sure you connect with him. We'll put his uh, links in the description as well. Um, so yeah, we're basically just talking to him about why he decided to join the profession and what it was like before, you know, working on construction sites, etc. Just a general good old chimwag with a nice bloke. So let's get into the podcast. Right, Steve, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, James. Ah, thank you for coming on. Thank you very much. So why don't you give us a, we, we're going to kind of talk about, it's an interesting one with yourself today. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually really excited about this because with so many people that are like, and don't take this the wrong way, so many people that are like yeah. you know, experts in their field of like psychology or sociology or safety professional for 20 years. And, and I, was, I was thinking a while back, do you know, I, I want to talk to some people that that are like the, the the life and soul of what we do in it in the British economy, which is just doing the job, um, yeah. and and talk to like normal people like me. I'm just a I'm just a, a safety professional on a day job with with kind of like a weird hobby of doing a podcast. Um, so I was kind of really excited when you messaged me about you know like the podcast and I said hey you want to come on and talk about it and you were like yes love that you know people that are happy to come on a podcast like my, my best friends so why don't you <laughs> give us a, a quick introduction of yourself and your kind of career to come to where you're where you are now which if I'm right is like pretty much the beginning of your your safety career hopefully pretty much yeah so um yeah thanks James so uh, yeah my name's Steve Ashby um I am from I live in Norfolk at the moment um I'm just pushing 40 so um, getting nice on and young. Of, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I wish it was. Yeah, I wish I was your age again. <laughs> I can actually say that now. Um, so I've got, uh, I'm a family man. I've got a newborn sitting at, uh, downstairs at the moment, being quiet for a change. Uh, a five year old and a 15 year old. So, oh, wow. Got, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, newborn and GCSEs. Oh, Interesting. Wow. Uh, especially at the moment. Yeah. Um, so, but, but yeah, my family basically is, is the thing that gets me out of bed in the morning. Um, Love I've got 
to make my work life as interesting as possible. So, um, but basically, uh, I started my career back in um, '96. Um, that doesn't make me feel sound old. Well, I don't, not to make you feel old, but I would have been six years old. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're right. Yeah, yeah that's six. Yeah, I, a good I'd age. Have, yeah, um, I'd have been six years old. Sorry, not to make you feel really old. <laughs> so I'm a yeah, I'm a carpenter by trade. Uh, did an apprenticeship, um, which I finished in uh, 2000. Uh, I was on the tools till about 2005 when I started a management career um, from, I suppose, the bottom of the management rung. Um, I might get shot down for this, but I was a foreman um, and worked my way out to site management and then went, had a couple of roles in project, project management. Um, I've worked with Frey through quite a few sectors um, and employers. <laughs> uh, I was subject to uh, to various cultures and attitudes and both management and workers I couldn't really settle in the job to be honest okay. um, it wasn't till I realized um, kind of my passion in health and safety it sort of became apparent why really um, I don't like being stuck in the job in the same place day after day generally doing the same thing although site management is a little bit varied yeah. um, I do love variety uh, love challenges and I suppose one of the things that interests me is perhaps I like to have an influence um, and encouraging change. Um, I think you'll get all of them. And you don't, you, yeah, you don't. It's, site management is kind of, uh, and project management is is not. I don't consider, by and large, being part of that process um, really. But um, I kind of that's where I am at the moment. Anyway, um, I've not really had any employers since 2010, which uh, I finished my longest employment um that i felt valued in my job so um i decided to make a change in career mm. in the hope that i could do something about it i like that i want to talk about your i want i want to talk about your kind of choice to come over to to health and safety and your passion about that in a bit what i yeah. would love to kind of dive into first is that i i think and like i was saying a, a minute ago is that kind of one of the main things that get me excited about having you on the podcast is that I, I genuinely believe that there's still a lot of safety professionals out there that, that think that we are not the problem, uh, mm. that, that think that the problem are, you know, what you used to be, the foremans, the chippies, the tradesmen, yeah, yeah. except you're the problem. You're not listening to us. You know, we're coming along. We're telling you what you need to do and you must do it. Now, don't get me wrong. Not all safety professionals are like that, just your old yeah. fashioned ones. And, and if at the end of this podcast, we can kind of convince that one or two old fashioned people that listen to this podcast, um, if I'm honest, if you're old fashioned, you probably stop listening after episode two. Um, <laughs> but if they, you know, t- they, they held on and they, they're still listening, you know, that that the perception of health and safety um, being that health and safety gone mad kind of perception, yeah. it, it is still there, in my opinion. Um yeah. And, and I'd like to just kind of explore what that feels like from a point of view of being a foreman. Like, what are the kind of interactions you were getting with safety professionals back when you were on site? And and how, yeah, let's just stick with that first. You know, what kind of experiences were you having with people like me, for example, but like years ago? So, so from a trade perspective, um, I think the health and safety profession team, they from my experience, overcomplicated. Um, okay. That's from the trades perspective, and um, it's not all organisations. Um, some of them just seem hell bent on enforcing PPE, and that was all it seems to be. Um, I've uh, I've seen health and safety and site managers moaning about not wearing a hard hat when there's work at height risks not being properly controlled, mm-hmm. and that gets that gets bounded about a lot, a lot. That's um, just a common example, but. Um, it's always seemed to be a box ticking exercise, yeah. Right, and this this is really only changed for me, my perception, perspective, um, my perception of it recently. Okay. Um, but that's where I come from, um, my trades background, um, and that's the experiences I've had basically. Um, it's interesting you say that. I, I always use this example, but I remember when I was in my first ever role in safety and um, and I was walking around for a lot. And I've, I've, anyone that's ever been on a training course with me, which to be honest, you're probably not listening to this podcast. So I probably said this po- in, in 
this example in this podcast before, mm-hmm. but I use it all the time because I just think it's so classic health and safety. And, and anyway, I'd left the I'd left the factory. I was going walking around the corner to uh, the local subway as you do, and mm-hmm. um, and I walked past this uh, warehouse essentially, and um, I walked past it every single day. But I, I'm quite an observant person. I like to look around. I think yeah, as yeah. you as you develop in your career in health and safety, you'll get trained to do that. Especially if you start doing like bio risk assessments, you end up just having a natural reaction of walking in a room and doing this. And just looking around everywhere, yeah. And you just do it all the time. It's probably the biggest bane of your life when, when, as you as you kind of progress in it. But that aside, and I was doing that, and so I was walking down, and I saw these these like two gents on the roof, and one one gent on the floor. I was quite young and cocky in my in my career in health and safety, so I was like, I was like, went over and had a chat with them, and then I could see that these guys like they weren't tied down to anything like they had the harness on they had the high vis on they had a hard hat on which I'm, I'm still yet to find somebody to give me a solid answer as to why people wear hard hats working yeah. on a roof like what's going to hit you on the head bird shit yeah, I'm quite really... common see yeah and it is i see it all the time and no one's giving me a solid argument as to say well a plane could come down and hit you on the head or something. <laughs> i really don't know but anyway so they're wearing all the ppe like you just said they're wearing all the ppe they were wearing a harness. That harness was attached to nothing. There was no edge protection or anything. And I just said, gents, what, what are you doing to reduce the likelihood of your people falling off a roof? And they were like, oh, we're wearing a harness. Yeah, but your harness is not attached to anything. And, and the guy literally, honestly, this is not a joke. People don't believe me sometimes. He literally went, hey, Bob, Bob, shouting up to the roof. I, can't, I just used Bob as an example. I don't know what his name yeah. is. But, hey, Bob, Bob, what? What do you want? This lad says we're supposed to be wearing a harness connected to something. And he, he's like, no, nah, no, nah, check, check the policy, mate. So he goes up, he go, literally goes into his van, opens this like this like glove compartment, whips out like this massive wad of paper. And he's like, <laughs> flicks through all of it. And then he gets it and he's like, no, nah, no, nah, it just says, just says wear a harness, mate. I've seen that. I, you, you say that. I have seen that before. Yeah. Scaffold, scaffolders. Um, some scaffolds are quite renowned for that. You get two carabiners, then you get two for the rest. So basically, when you're climbing across the scaffold, and you will connect one, and when you've got to move, you'll connect the new one, and then disconnect the old one, so you're not exposed to a risk. Yeah. And the times I've seen scaffolders wandering across the scaffold, I mean, none, none of them attached. No. So no. it's quite common. Yeah, well, I agree. I think it is. I mean, I've, I've never t- to touch wood. I don't ever want a job in construction, if I'm honest. But <laughs> I've I've, uh, I've never worked in construction. But I've all, I've been a client a lot of the time. So doing it from that point of view, managing yeah. it from our, our duty as a client. But the amount of times I just drive past construction sites and mm. just think, what are you doing? Um, yeah. And and I think when you say there, like it really kind of struck a nerve with me when when you say you know your experience of it is people just enforcing PPE. I think that's true. Yeah. That's, I don't know why there's such a focus. I really don't. But, uh, you know, it's, it is changing. I have seen it changed over recent years. Okay. Um, uh, and it is getting better. Is it? Okay. So let's explore that for a little bit. It's yep. slightly off on the tangent. But what, yeah. what, when you say it, when you say you think you feel like it's changed, what, what makes you say that? Um, it's more so on the bigger companies. Um I don't know, um, I can't put my finger on exactly why it's changed. Um, obviously, attitude, uh, sorry, attitudes, um, the yeah, attitudes are now changing. Um, well, like the attitudes of like the workers, the, the tradesmen, etc. Yeah. I, I, or everybody. Everyone, I think. Um, it's, it is definitely better than what it was. Definitely. I mean, I've, I've been on jobs where, as an agency carpenter, where I have been told, get up on that roof, uh, been doing a pitched roof, walking across the joists, no edge protection, no fall protection, nothing. And that was perfectly acceptable. And this was only 10 years ago, eight yeah. years ago. Um, now, I don't know if it's perhaps different sites and different companies I've worked on, but there is more of an emphasis on keeping people safe. But it seems to me that the pe- the way it's done perhaps gets people's back up, the tradesmen's back up. So um, it always seems to be focused on punishment and 
you've got to do this, you've got to do that, all this will happen and that will happen. Um, you'll get this red card, red card, and yellow cards. You heard of them? Yeah, I have, yeah. Instructions, they get bounded about a lot. Mm. So, and... Do you not have any value? I don't think that helps change. I, no. I really don't. So you don't, you don't think that the red card, yellow card, they, they have no value really, in your opinion? If they, it depends how they're used. If they're used for, I mean... One of the large top tier main contracts that I worked for quite a while ago, they would issue the yellow cards to the red card system and it was a punishment. So if you did something wrong, you get a yellow card. If you get a second yellow card, you basically get two yellow cards and then you get a red card, same as football, I suppose. And then you're off site. Um, I think the second yellow card is constituted a re-induction. Um, now, they might be for silly little things like um, at the time it was you had to wear your goggles all the time. Even if you weren't doing anything, just walking across site, you wear your safety specs. Um, so if they caught you not wearing the safety specs, it was, oh, you, yellow card, what's your name? Pretty much police. Would, would, they, police literally, powers, that's sort of what it would they literally get a yellow card out of the pocket like in a football? Uh, uh, no, you would get a yellow card put in on your site file though. Oh, so go against oh. your company. Yeah. I would piss myself. We had some like yeah. safety geezer pulling up like a yellow card <laughs> with a whistle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I've seen that, and and that that just makes people hide problems. To yeah. Me. yeah. Um, if there's a problem, I mean, this was a main top tier contract. This was. Um, so do you feel like there's no there's no kind of so so they're, they're doing the red card or yellow card but like is there a, in in your experience even if there is or isn't i suppose it doesn't matter because if, if you would have been a, a tradesman there or, or a foreman or, or whatever you were at the time you, you felt at that time that it was just a form of punishment there was no kind of further investigation as to well what let's look at let's try and understand why steve's not wearing his goggles and was did you ever you never saw anything like that or even if if you did like it, how'd that make you feel or was it just for just punishment um you could be the best behaved tradesman on site you could be absolutely to t and you might be walking across site and perhaps come out the site office and forgot to put your safety glasses on and then you'll get a yellow card and that's kind of marked on your file so it that instantly made people go on the defense i suppose mm. um and it and it on the other thing it did was at the time i was a foreman at the time and i was used to get whenever the safety visit was due we used to get the heads up for a phone call and i used to run, run around all the trades on site bear in mind this was a huge multi-story office building in the center of london um we used to have to run around and tell all the trades or phone all the trades and say quick health and safety's on site um make sure you're Doing what you're supposed to be doing, basically. And at that point, would everybody just put their goggles on, their hard hats on, their well, high visors on, or yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, to be fair, the company I worked for was the company of my longest employment because they absolutely valued. They were strict, but they had good values, uh, and I enjoyed working for them. And they valued me. And they valued everyone that worked for them. But um, this was a, a case in point of uh, the hard hat and the glasses that you just mentioned. Um, they might be in little finished rooms with full light and everything's all finished inside. They might be touching something up, uh, you know, not painting. Um, don't need to particularly wear your glasses and your hard hat doing that uh, if there's no one else around you. But if that safety man walked in and saw you about your glasses and your goggles, then it was an instant, it was an instant penalisation. Uh, yeah. And the other thing, there was, there was safety scores as well. So they would mark you down for that and then your safety score would be produced at the end of the month and it would be whatever less for that reason. No, I do know what you mean. I think I, I still see it now. And I can understand where some of this stuff, like the safety scoring and stuff like, so in construction, most people are subbies, aren't they? And I granted, I understand that varies, but you know, most people are subbies, which gives them the flexibility to say, right, get off site. Because essentially you're firing someone without going through any of the HR procedures that you need to, which is again, also a bit dodgy, but I'm not a HR professional, so I won't go down that route. But there is there is a point of like contractor management to be able to say you know we're gonna we're gonna have a health and safety scoring system and I, and I, I think there's no problem with that you know I I think my my concern with all of this stuff is it there's no mid there's no middle way point you know what I mean like we just we're, we're yeah. very extreme and and I and I think that this happens now this stuff happens now I see contractors being audited to go into 
a house and and refit a kitchen and then we send an auditor in and the auditor marks them down by saying right you're not wearing a high vis i remember sitting in a meeting you know not so long ago and our contract manager is giving his contractor a bashing by saying, you know, you're losing loads of points and you say, yeah. and, and we're going to dock you some this and do that. I can't remember what the punishment was, but there was some kind of contractual punishment. And, mm. and I'm like, well, hang on a minute for, for what, what for? And they're like, every, every day they're being spotted, not wearing high vis. And I'm like, where are they working? Oh, we're just doing kitchen refits in a minute. Why do they need to wear a high vis in someone's kitchen? Because the JCB could drive through the kitchen and run them over, clearly. Yeah, I'm not being funny. If a car hits them in the kitchen, I'm more concerned about how the car got to the kitchen, not the fact they weren't wearing the high vis. Yeah. And, it, and it's like, th this is that short sightedness that, that I think creates this perception. So, I mean, one of the conversations I wanted to have with you was that, in your opinion, this perception of health and safety is, is warranted, in, in your opinion. I, I think we've just agreed that, that it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, this yeah. stuff happens. We are yeah. going in some cases over the top. Um, yeah. And in my opinion, what that does is, is it has uh, a kind of uh, an effect later on. It creates a risk in a way by you and your team then not listening to anything to do with health and safety because yeah. you, you've been annoyed you're having to wear ppe all the time and you yeah. think well that's pointless therefore you tar all of home safety with the same brush yeah. and and then don't listen when you're working at height for example which is a serious risk that we need to manage which we would need to go uh, maybe a little bit more over the top to use that phrase yeah, yeah. Would, would you would you agree do you think that happens um do you think people kind of switch off from it because they get pissed off on the ground floor but then when they're doing something more serious they don't really consider the risks because they're yeah, hard with that perception. Yeah, it does actually. Um, I, some people as well, I've noticed, um, will do it out of spite as well. I mean, I've no, really that's interesting. Yeah, I've, I've seen people um, get moaned at so much for not wearing high-vis hard hats, and then relay to the site management team that, oh, this is wrong. Why are you moaning about my hard hat when there's this and that and this and that wrong? Yeah, and then yeah, the response is just get your hard hat on. Mm. And then that, then then they don't bother to report anything. Don't bother to. If, if they're not going to take it seriously, why should we? You know, why should we report mm. new misses? Why should we see? There's a gaping great hole in the scaffold. There. What's the point in reporting it if they're not going to keep? If they're just going to keep going on about hard acts. Mm -hmm. So it does get. It does put people's back out. You know, backs up a lot. Um, do you think that it? Do you, do you think that the, the perception is 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 so the the kind of um, I'll, I'll say perception yeah I'll say I'll say yeah. perception. the perception of health and safety because there are some people doing it right there are some people doing it right so yeah. some businesses you know I've, I've spoke about my best mate on this podcast time and time again he you know he's a, he's a brickie um, has been for has been since college pretty much he always knew he wanted yeah. to be a brickie um, and he always sends me videos and photos of just <laughs> horrible yeah. stuff that I just think, why are you doing this? Or he sends me videos and, and messages and photos of just some really crazy over the top pointless stuff. And, yeah. and there's just no in between. And then the no. other day he sent me a photo and he said, James, you, you'll love this. This is probably the best site I've ever worked on. And he, and he showed me this, this site where basically Everything was kind of organized. There was a clear road. There was a clear pathway. There was clear storage area. It had been marked out on the ground, bricks, uh, cement, whatever. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a brickie, so I don't yeah, know what, what they are. But all of their kind of raw materials, I had it set out. And I said to him, like, forget health and safety. That must just be a better, an easier way to work, surely. Like, you know where everything is. Like, you know, in manufacturing, you have like Lean Six Sigma and all that stuff. Yeah. And all, all of that is really, is like good organization and, and kind of being efficient with your processes. It yeah. must, just, must just be better to work like that. And he said, yeah, I suppose he did say like you have to get used to it because he's so used to just plonking everything where he is. But, you know, and, and he'd been in this since college. So he's just exactly the same age as me. So it's a fair few years. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time he's worked on a site that had that level of organization. Yeah. If you go and do your 
uh, SMSTS or whatever it's called, the yeah. site supervisor course, you know, one of the requirements is you have to draw a site plan and they judge yeah. you on how organized that is. But yet I've not been to one site or he's not been to one site that is anywhere near as organized as what you're required yeah. to do on the training. Um, so there are good people out there and, and this, this very long story is going to get to a point, I promise. Um, <laughs> there are people out there doing a good job and that, I want to make that clear because I don't want people to think that this is just a health and safety yeah. professional bashing session, which it's not. Um, but my question to you is you kind of put your foreman, your tradesy kind of hat back on. Yep. You come across a good health and safety professional one that's very good at talking to you he's relaxed you know he's like i'm here to help steve you know there's some stuff that I'm, i need to be quite strict on but because the risk is high you know it's just a general good bloke or woman um they're quite reasonable they're exactly yeah. what you want a safety professional to be do you think the perception is too far um ingrained in people that it doesn't matter now do you know what i mean like kind of like being a racist it doesn't matter yeah. if that that minority is is good or bad nice person you're not going to listen because you're racist do you, do you get what i'm saying that's a really horrible analogy yeah. but but, yeah. but do you think we've gone too far there's no way to bring this back or no absolutely not and i don't, I don't even think it's it's that bad i've probably made out through my experience so i've basically only explained to you everything that's negative that's happened about health and safety advisors and help my health and safety experience so, yeah, so what, I know, but... what i'm trying to what i'm trying to work out is like in your opinion do do you do you think that like there's a lot of colleagues that you've worked with etc that like have made a decision about me as a health and safety professional before they've even met me do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, the, yeah. they know what I'm going to yeah. be like. So it doesn't matter if I'm like that or not. They've made that decision. Yeah. I see that a lot, actually. Um, you can't change people overnight, can you? Um, it's all down. To, uh, there's a lot of factors, I suppose, that varies on people's opinion on what. Well, how long do you think? Uh, how, I think you're right. And it's a really difficult question. I, I get why you you're kind of struggling. <laughs> I'm even, trying, if, yeah, I'm, even if I was to answer it, I I think like like this just how mm -hmm. my kind my kind of brain works. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is that kind of I I, I I see it so much. You know, even outside yeah. of construction, you know, I see it. People have people are nervous or they've made a yeah. judgment about me before I've even turned up because mm. of my title. You know, we talk about, we joke about it within the industry to say like, you know, Oh, hi Steve. Nice to meet you. What do you do for a yeah. job? Or I'm, I'm a foreman on site. Oh, cool. What, what site are you working on? And the conversation goes, yeah. you know, hi James. Nice to meet you. What do you do? I'm a health and safety professional. Oh, bloody hell. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's that, yeah. it's that. And I don't, I'm concerned that, we're not going to change it yeah. so i feel like what you're trying to say is yes we can change yeah, yeah. it but but like over a think, long period i know what you mean um and i don't think it's down to hate and self health and safety you know professional per se um everyone's different everyone's got different perspective uh, perceptions of what health and safety and risks are and what's acceptable and what's not um it's very varied on how someone is there's so many factors in people's attitudes towards health and safety and their attitudes towards the likes of you uh, that are working in health and safety mm. um and it's i kind of think that it's um it's down to how they're brought up who they work with what companies they work for yeah, um what how they've been treated um if they've been with a bad employer that doesn't give two hoots about health and safety and perhaps put them you know put lives at risk on a daily basis then they're going to come to a new employer and look at health and safety professionals a problem aren't they straight away mm. um that's, that's seen... exactly it that's exactly mm. what i'm trying to work out so maybe if i was to rephrase the question it might be a bit better if you were to if as as a kind of as a person with like years of experience as a foreman as a, as a chippy etc what would you want to see from a health and safety professional that would be a that that's a better question i think yeah um what, what does I, a good one look like to you a good one uh, i'm gonna answer that um um in my basically my previous experience um with health and safety advisors and um 
going back to my days in London, um, the good health and safety advisor would come in, um, have a coffee, have a chat, ask how the family was. Um, the health and safety visit would be a more kind of informal thing. It would perhaps just be a walk around. Um, you haven't even got to say hazard spotting. I mean, I've, I've walked around with health and safety guys and just chatted with them all day and they've not even said anything unless obviously it's a major issue got back and said this you know good job on site it looks really nice it's clean tidy you've done this good but i've got these points to raise can you just have a look and see what this so i think it's about how it's approached how how personable you are we interrupt this broadcast to bring you a shameless sponsorship clip. In all seriousness, guys, we partnered up with DRM Group. You know David McLean, he's been on the podcast time and time again. We absolutely support his message and he's got a brand new online course to help you. I'm gonna let him tell you all about it now. The brain can be trained to think and behave differently, to think in more positive and optimistic ways. And there are steps that you can take to train your brain to feel good for good. And we call this lasting positive change. Through our 16-day program, which includes daily videos and action sheets, taking you no longer than 15 minutes to complete a day. You will learn how to move away from thoughts of anger, hopelessness and frustration to a place of mental well-being and positivity. Okay, guys, so if you're interested, you can click the link below and get a discount, special rebranded safety discount, full disclosure. We get a little bit kickback from that. So at the same time as improving your mental health, you can support your favourite health and safety podcast and YouTube channel. I'll let you get back into the content. Mm, I like that. I like that. Yeah, I think how personal right. you are. Um, if you, I mean, we've, I've also had it come in um, officious and um, stiff and straight away before you even go out on site. I mean, I've had... I've seen the face on some site managers. I've seen the fear in site managers' eyes before when they get the phone call to say the health and safety guys in the car park, and they've absolutely cracked themselves. Really? Just not not knowing that they could have the best site in the world, but knowing that that health and safety guys here is coming to dictate the rules to them and to say this is not right or this is not right, and just come and fault find. It's just you know this. It's, that's why sometimes the health and safety profession gets a bad rep and yeah. not always, it's not always justified. Cause I think you're right. I remember going to um, starting with a new company and, and going to a site um, to do a health and safety audit. Um, now, I'm not a massive fan of audits. If I was going to go to a site, if I'm honest, I would say oh, it's a visit or a chat or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. But I think the term freight, the term audit comes with an enforcement kind of uh, mindset. I, I think that's how people interpret it. I'm being audited. There's only, yeah. only bad things are going to come from this. A list of work to do to, to be better or a telling off. Um, I'm never going to get, you know, good because all auditors are looking for something wrong. So anyway, that that's just my rant about audits. I was going to the site to do to do an audit, and um, I just got to the site and like I'm I'm extremely relaxed in, in the kind of way I approach people, and I like exactly what you just said i'd like to approach it like that i'm coming here for a coffee i've just been driving for two hours the first thing i want to do is sit down have a coffee get to know you uh, understand who you are hi steve how you doing how long you've been working this site you know what do you do as a hobby just general chit chat yeah because i want you to relax as well but anyway the second i walk through this door i just could tell this person was so uptight they were mm -hmm. so nervous yeah. and literally like ran up to me and they were like hi james uh, welcome to blah blah site um i was just wondering if you could just sign in over here thank you um this is the sign in book you'll see the name the, yeah. the title the da, 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 and like taking me through the whole thing and i'm like mm, this is either really comprehensive and this guy loves health and safety or yeah. this guy's been royally screwed over by a safety yeah, person yeah, yeah. before. Yeah. And I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to wait and see. So anyway, he's like, I'll just give you a quick induction. Because you're a visitor, if you wouldn't mind wearing this orange high visibility jacket. And, um, and 
<laughs> I'm, I'm not going to explain what type of site it was because it will give away what company it was. Uh, but it wasn't a building site. It wasn't a factory. It wasn't anything like that. The risk of me walking around, I did not need a horrid orange no. hybrids. But anyway, it gives me this orange hybrids. And, I'm, and I, I literally went to, really? You want me to wear that? He's like, yes, please. It is part of our health and safety policy, which I will show you later. And he's like, really like nervous. He's yeah. practically shaking this guy. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. And he's like, should we go for a walk around the building? And I'm like, if you don't mind, mate, I'm in a car for two hours. I really need a wee and I'd love a cup of coffee. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, all oh, right, yeah, okay, let's do that. And we got into the kitchen, made a coffee, sit down, and he's still, I'm talking to him, he's still really nervous. And I just remember saying to him, I'm going to call him Steve just because you're right in front of me and that's the name. <laughs> of the and I said, look, Steve, what is wrong? calm down is there something happened today that you need me to leave and just come back or can i help or what and it, and he's just like no i just i just you know i i, I, yeah. I, I, I want i want to get this audit audit re, re, you know really re, really really i want it to be good i want it to be good and i'm like just relax it was gonna i'm not come here to destroy your business or, or your your site and tear you apart and get you to lose your job or anything calm down i want you to enjoy this experience i'm just here for a chat yeah but it's it's, it's an audit it's an audit and i was like yeah it is an audit that's what it's called but i'm just going to look at your paperwork and i'm going to try and help you fix the problem just calm down and eventually started to calm down and then i went back like a few months later and like we started to get to know each other and then i then i went back again and um and we've we've started to talk away and it finally came out that this person that the, the used to have my job in, in my area was an absolute prick. And, and literally, and he said that sometimes he would point and get real close to me, point at me and shout yeah. and be like, why have you got this like this? And I'm just like, what the hell? So this guy was physically scared yeah, of yeah. me because of the term health and safety audit yeah. because of the last person that came before me had built this perception of what I was going to be. And it was horrible mm. to experience. Yeah, I bet. never want to experience that again in my life. I felt so sorry for the bloke. He was like sweating and everything. I just felt so that's, sorry for him. See, that's why um, I don't think punish. I mean, he's obviously fearing perhaps repercussions or punishment from your report or from the health and safety report. Yeah. Um, and that's why I don't think punishment always works um, because you're just going to scare people, aren't you? I mean, I think there's a time and a place in, in my opinion. Yeah. I think there's yeah. a time. and a place. I think so I always kind of talk about it. If someone to say, how, how should I manage health and safety? And I say, you should manage health and safety the same way I manage my dog. So my dog mostly gets positive yeah. reinforcement mostly right but there are times where i have to be very stern with them and i sometimes lose my shit a little bit but that aside <laughs> sometimes i have to be really stern so i i say most of the time it's you know carry on with your job how are we doing blah 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 let's do this be quite flexible you know work with people talk to them but sometimes the risk gets really high and then that's when i flip into serious mode and i say no nope, steve stop right now listen to me and stop right now this is like imminent danger we need to be really strict got permits to work you know get real heavy yeah. on it but then tomorrow when that risk is gone and we're doing something completely different we relax a lot more that that's how i like to see it i think punishment i, I yeah i i think and that goes go on exactly the same exactly the same. i read something the other day um i was talking to someone about um punishing kids and yeah. I was arguing that you don't need to punish children. So I, I got on Google and I looked up and then there was something and I thought, this is health and safety 101. This guidelines for the best kind of the most research and the best way to kind of develop your child. It worked in the work capacity as well. I thought it was brilliant. And it was things like um, showing them and telling them right from wrong, how they should behave culture mm. um setting clear limits and um, consistency in rules and behaviors giving the consequences what could happen no you know not mm. punishment but what you know the outcome could be and this was mm. children and it's like yeah. wow and the same as your dog analogy is it, yeah you know, it doesn't always yeah okay some instances that's why the law is there isn't it it's got to be punished but yeah i think 
I think there is a place for it. Um, I, but I think it's in very extreme circumstances. And I think the problem is we do we punish more than we reward. I think that yeah, yeah. that's my biggest concern. Um, and and I do think I quite like you've got like Sydney Decker's work who talks about like just culture. Andrew Sham and Judith Hackett they talk about it as well. You know, a lot of people talk about it. It's got a lot of people don't like Sydney's work, Sydney Decker's work, and that that's fair enough. Whatever. Um. I'm, I'm not a massive advocate for anyone's work if I'm honest I, I like bits and bobs of everybody but that aside I, I like the idea of a just culture it's to say do you know what if you if you if you blatantly do something wrong and you knew it was wrong and you just did it anyway mm. you know essentially you're just being a complete ass then then yeah you're gonna get punished and you're gonna get enforcement the same as my dog, he knows 100% he's not allowed to bark out the window, but he still does it, and he bloody <laughs> knows, because the second I stand up, he runs to his bed, because he knows he's going to get told off, but he, yeah, still, yeah. he does it, and he bark, yeah. and he look, he'll look at me, you know, and it, it, I'm not saying that, uh, that everyone at work is a dog, and they're all stupid, and you're not no, saying that everyone's got the brain of a child either, but what I'm saying is, there are similarities in this stuff, um, yeah. and... And I do genuinely think that we overly rely on punishment. These red card, yellow card things, you know, it, it's like, what? You know, safety, I've talked about, I mean, we had Stephen Melvin on, who I've not, I've not spoken to in a long time, actually, but we had him on the podcast, you know, just a normal safety professional, come on, yeah. just to have a chit chat about manual handling. And I said, why are safety professionals walking around, you know, punishing people for not lifting correctly? Why are they not going around rewarding people for lifting correctly? because there's more people lift incorrectly than there is incorrectly. But mm. I think positive reinforcement works a lot better. So I, I do think punishment has a place, but punishment yep. should should come after positive reinforcement, in my opinion. Mm. But, I mean, I've got my first kid in the way, so I'll let you know how that works oh, out. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Oh, good luck. Uh, yeah, thank you. I don't know if this <laughs> is going to work. I might just go full down the punishment route and just be like, right, <laughs> I'm smacking your ass. Why? Well, just because I want to smack your ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> But it is it is interesting, and I do I do see a lot of similarities. I mean, in in one of Andrew's books, actually, he he even mentions like a method. Uh, I think it's called ABC, and I can't remember. It's action, behavior, consequence. So he uses the example of his sister feeding the uh, the kids dinner. So. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me of my little brother. So, so the, there's quite a big age gap between my, my, me and my brother. So it's about 10 years. So, you know, I was a teenager when he was like six and whatever. Um, and he was a nightmare for eating his dinner, an absolute nightmare. Because when I look back on it, he knew that dinner meant bath and bed straight away afterwards and in this book yeah. andrew was saying his sister absolutely nails a the abc method the action is eat your dinner uh, the action is to eat your dinner the behavior is we want you to eat your dinner we want you to the good behavior is you're eating it nice quick you're doing it calm whatever um the consequence was after your dinner mummy will come and sit down and play with you full-on dedicated mummy daughter son yeah. whatever time so the consequence of eating a dinner was positive and not negative and and i think that's the opposite of which it just good and but yeah. that's the opposite of what we do in health and safety we do you know action wear your hard hat behavior you're not wearing it consequence yeah. yellow card yeah. do it again yellow card do it again red card and it's like there's there's no well wear, wear my hard hat why well because you won't die that's not good enough you know, I, I don't wear a hard hat ever, and I'm still alive. That argument doesn't work. No, there's got to be some kind of positive reinforcement to this. So I think I think you're right, mate. I yeah. think I, I I do think it has its place, but I do think it needs to be a rarity. Yeah, yeah. I think um, especially with sight, you have got to kind of make things as simple as possible. I mean, I try the the building sites and this is no reflection on anyone's intelligence but you have got to keep things simple because trades have got things to do and they've got their mind has got to be focused on their work so if you're going to overcomplicate health and safety then this you're just going to keep getting non-compliance aren't you i mean mm. that's kind of the by and large of it really um i don't think i don't think that's that's unique to construction I think everywhere should keep it simple. You know, yeah. I think we overcomplicate stuff 
oh, to, to the nth degree. You can yeah. overcomplicate it in the shop floor and you can overcomplicate it all the way up to, you know, full on years and years of experience as a safety professional. We were talking about safety too and behavior based safety and, and bloody, I don't know, all the crazy schemes that are coming out and have been out for years. Everyone argues about them. And I just yeah. think, I don't see any problem with with what the law is telling you to do to be reasonable and practicable. What was yeah. what was ever wrong with that? There's no there's nothing wrong with that. You know, all, all you're trying to do here is create a nice place to work and be reasonable and be practicable, and that's it. Yeah. You know, but but yet we overcomplicate. And I understand what people are trying to do. They're trying to come up with a new way to do it to sell a book and make loads of money. I get that. I'm not naive enough to say that. And they do have value. A lot of Sydney's work is good. A lot of Eric's work is good. You know, Andrew's work is good. But everyone just gets so bogged down in the complications. And mm. like, sometimes I just see all this stuff that we implement yeah. at businesses. And I just think, why are you doing this? Like, prime think, example, we need to... Yeah, go on. Sorry. sorry, buddy. I've got to remember you're the guest and I should talk less. No, you. no, I'm, I'm... Yeah, carry on. Um, <laughs> Prime example, I think well, you know, some businesses will have a review process yeah. for a risk assessment. Primarily, this is quite common in fire risk assessments, right? So you have a fire risk assessment, and if you're quite a little bit switched on, you'll realize that when the consultant tells you you need to review it every year, that it's just a cash cow and that he's trying to get repeat mm-hmm. business and you don't need to do that. Okay, so great, we've done that. But we should have an internal review process. Why? Well, because we need to review it. Why do you need to review it? Well, because the law says we need to review it. Okay, what are you going to do? Once a year, we're going to create this separate form, um, which is our review form. We'll fill out in there and we'll write down all the changes or not changes and we'll, we'll sign it off and we'll keep that as a record to show we're reviewing the process. Uh, what do you think, James? I think it's a waste of paper. I think it's an absolute waste of time. The problem is you don't trust your staff to tell you if something's changed. That's, that's, that's the root cause of this. In my opinion, and some people would say I'm naive and I really don't care. I like to keep things extremely simple. You know, has anything, hi, Steve, you manage number two on Bob street. Yes, I do. Has anything changed in that building? No. And I'll explore that a little bit more. You've not had an extension. You've not had a change of your roots. You've not changed any rooms from a bathroom over to a bedroom. No, nothing like that. Have you changed anything with the people that only got any disabled people started working in there? No, no disabled people. Um, All maintaining the alarms. Yeah. Can I see all the records? Yeah. Cool. They're there. Boom. No changes. Fire Fire assessment stays as it is. We don't need to write anything down. But, but what if something goes wrong? If something goes wrong, the root cause is not that you didn't review it. The, ro- the root cause is that something went wrong. So, mm. so what was the reason something went wrong? Because you weren't managing whatever it was that caused the fire yeah, in yeah. the first place. I, I just feel like we focus on the, on the plaster that we put yeah. on the wound and not on the, what stopping what made the wound, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we just overcomplicate stuff all yeah, the time. Yeah. And, and I, yeah, I think, I mean, that's kind of what you are for and safety professionals to take that complication in your head and then almost dumb it down a little bit depending on what you're talking to so that's why the qualifications are so in-depth and so mind-boggling mm. especially for the likes of me um because we've got to know or you've got to know all of this stuff so that you can break it down for the tradesmen and for the managers and for the business owners because they don't need to know all the legislations and everything do they they just need to know what they need to do to be honest mate we don't even need to know legislation what, <laughs> nearly all legislation says the same thing risk assess it and do what's reasonable and practicable yeah. if anyone gets enforced on they do it on the on the health and safety at work act so and that mm. says what do what's reasonable, do what's practicable. Yes, there are for more higher risk stuff. There are some much more prescriptive kind of mm. measures. But for most of us, that's what we're dealing with. Um, mm. So let, let, let's have a quick chat then about kind of what was the point that you went from, from um, I'm, a, I'm a foreman, I'm a project manager. Um, you're quite an extensive, I would say, made probably successful career in construction that you're going to come and join the dark side and you want to be a safety <laughs> professional. 
yeah. you alluded to earlier having a passion for it i <laughs> i don't know any one that's not extremely weird like me and a handful of other people that have a passion for this stuff where, where did that come from was was there an event or was there a moment or was it gradual that was gradual yeah. um that's i've had like i said earlier i had people in the profession that were really nice and really coming i was i used to look forward to alex coming down for a coffee and carl coming down for a coffee and a chat no, and, and that to me was kind of like oh wow what a great job they got going around sites chatting to people drinking coffee all day i'm not brilliant <laughs> like, this was like 10 years don't, ago don't tell I people mean, that's all we do <laughs> Jesus. And, then, and then it was like the next visit would be from anon you know joe blogs would be like you said earlier with your guy would be scared stiff so yeah. it would vary so much so it was like why does it, it don't need to be like that i know from my experience i they get better response out of me by being nice and I've seen more people terrified of the health and safety profession than what I have actually me seeing the good side so it was gradual um, uh, it was more so in my younger days I did a sort of I suppose when early days of site management I did sort of see the health and safety professional um, I think it was Alex and Carl at the time and I did sort of look up to them and thought actually these are quite nice guys and yeah and then I would kind of be a bit like tennis would be bounding, bounding around. I'd meet a bad safety professional that would, you know, come and tear me a new arsehole <laughs> or something really stupid. And then it'd be like, oh, no, what do I want to do this for? So it's built up. Um, but I can see through the positives. Um, it's made me realise that I think that I could probably do quite a good job doing this because I understand people. I love that. Um, I, I've seen so many different personality types and I I like manipulating people. It sounds bad, but <laughs> I do enjoy. I, I, it's, it's, I suppose it's quite a good feeling when you've got In, someone... Influencing really, is, is the word you've replaced with manipulating. Yeah. Okay, just, just for future <laughs> reference, yeah. People, people, don't, people don't like saying, we, we know that's what we're doing, we're manipulating you. But yeah. we call it influencing. Right. <laughs> but it's, it's quite a good feeling knowing that you've made a positive difference to someone that perhaps might have a negative attitude at the start. And then you actually say to them, well, actually, you know, you can, if you do it this way, it's going to make a lot more sense. It's going to make your job easier. And then seeing that in product of actually they want to come, they want to do what's right as opposed yeah. to at the start where they were like, you know, putting up against a brick wall. Um, so, and I've done that in site management and it's actually, the more I learn, the more I realize this is what health and safety is about. It's about um, making people realize the benefits it could have of being, po you know, positive health and safety attitude. It's like how saying to an employer is like, by doing this could make you more money. Mm. it's not you know don't be stressing about the fact it's health and safety it's like do you know doing it this way in the long run it's gonna earn you more dosh <laughs> no i love that I lo there's so much you said there that i really like firstly i think alex was it alex and carl Alex and Carl. i think they need to congratulate him for for, <laughs> for obviously being very good safety professionals to encourage mm. you to join the industry so well done alex and carl for being for mm. being the good ones of the industry um Secondly, I think w welcome to the profession, Steve. We're, we're very happy to have you. I think we <laughs> need more people that think like you. I think you're right. The fly going past my face. Um, I think you're right. That, you know, there, there's an old saying. I say old saying. I say that like I'm this old wise <laughs> Chinese man. Got a few years on you, mate. <laughs> but <laughs> there's, a, it. <laughs> <laughs> there's a saying that somebody told me a long time ago that you know, good safety is good business. And I, I don't think people believe that. And I don't think people yeah. follow that. Uh, but I think you're right. I think mm -hmm. I like to think of this stuff as being efficient with our risks. You know, we have risks in a business, we, we need to be efficient around them. And to be efficient in a business is to kind of, you know, not lose money and be be as, as streamlined mm -hmm. as possible. So I think you're right. I think good safety mm -hmm. is good business. I think if you look at it from an overall point of view of managing risk, then 
then you're probably going to help your business even more. Mm-hmm. The more people that think like you, the more people that think, you know what, this is about talking to people. This is about influencing people, maybe potentially manipulating them, but I wouldn't want to give away all of that. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you, you know, it is it is about that. It's just kind of understanding people. And I like mm-hmm. the fact that you you've kind of seen what we we do and in in an industry and been attracted to it to be able to come over and help people because i think Mm -hmm. something i struggled with when i was young in in my career and and to be honest still struggle with now if i'm if i'm brutally honest yeah i would say i still struggle with it now is that it's a very thankless job um you know good is nothing happens Mm. so if i do my job right nothing happens so so we can we can go obviously it it changes company to company but i've been in so many companies where you you're you're not even considered you know you're like that one vital part in a machine that is required but you're that small that no one even knows you're there but they'll know you're they'll know you're not there do you know what i mean Mm. if you disappeared because something would seriously go wrong and it can get you really down sometimes I think you know people only email you when something's gone wrong people only email you and look to you um when something's gone wrong and they want you to make all the decisions even though you're you've been banging on the door telling them to fix this for years and then all of a sudden what what you've been saying for years actually happens and they go what James what do we do and I'm like well I can sit here and say I told you so or we can work together and try and figure this out so you've got to be a kind of a kind of unique person to, to do this job i think yeah you're right, you? i like i just i love I, when you message me i just love the fact that you've kind of gone from probably in in my experience from an outside perspective looking in yeah. one of the worst industries in health and safety statistically and i think mm-hmm. from a perception based point of view um to go in do you know what i don't want to run away from safety i want to come in i want to join yeah. i want to join the kind of the the rebel alliance against the kind of old-fashioned way of doing things in a way <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Oh, thank you yeah i love that so well done that's a big decision to make and you're, you're doing your did you say you're doing your ncrq now aren't you yeah so uh, i've done the ncrq certificate um i've just failed my first assignment on hcsd2 <laughs> which is the civil liability one uh which i'm struggling to get my head around um i if i'm on getting, I've been doing this for eight years and I struggled with the second book. I was talking to a colleague of mine yesterday who's he's been doing it longer than me. And he, I think he's been in the, in the game for about, I think I, I, he's been in, he's, he's older than me, but he was in the armed forces, et cetera. I'm sure he's done safety longer than me, but anyway, and I said to him, the second book, juicy, mate, it's hard. Yeah, it's yeah. Hard. I think it for anyone, mate. So don't beat yourself up. I am look the next one I'm looking forward to behavior one. That's kind of like what I like. So yeah. I think yeah, talking about law is probably, it's hard to digest, I think. Um, but yeah, so I'm doing the NZRQ, going on to do the diploma. Um, I'm enrolled in an MVQ, but you need evidence for that. So I'm struggling. Um, and I've done the uh, Nibosh construction certificate as well, which is okay. okay. I'm two thirds of the way through that. So I've done, t- I've passed two assignments. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's, yeah, that's where I am. And then I, I'd like to carry on once I've got the diploma, mm-hmm. maybe one day do uh, a university degree. If my tele- intelligence stretches that far, <laughs> my, tra- my trades background might limit it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll be fine. No offense. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I, that, so look, like I said, behavior is like, I, that really fascinates me and interests me in people. So maybe behavioral safety is something I'd like to further. I don't know, but it's, it's money and time at the moment and getting the first bit done. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I agree that it's all of this stuff costs money, which is a shame. If it was all free, we'd all be really intelligent. Oh, yes. um, but you know, YouTube mate, podcasts is loads of good yeah. podcasts out there, especially one about health and safety called rebound and safety. But that aside, um, <laughs> there are some amazing ones uh, from a safety point of view. Um, it's David, Provan's one safety. All right, I haven't heard of that one. Oh, what's that called? Safety of work. That's very good. Those two are like 
those two are like geniuses basically like do- yeah. doctors of of stuff um and that theirs is much more kind of technical and they talk mm-hmm. about like research articles research articles and stuff like that that's that's a really good podcast to so listen yeah, to right. if you like that stuff um for, for yourself and anyone else listen um I'm trying to think of other stuff. Any, I talk about the books and that all the time, but yeah, I'm, absolutely, Decker and that. I, yeah, I listen to stuff, um, stuff. a pre-accident investigation podcast, Todd Conklin. Yeah, Todd Conklin. So that guy's very easy to listen to. He is. He's yeah, very, and that's like cool systems-based stuff. It's American, isn't he, Todd? Well. Yeah. yeah, American. Mm. And then there's a couple of local ones I listen to as well, as well as yours. As well. I've only li- recently cottoned on to you, actually. I do <laughs> apologise, but um, terrible. I, Oh no! I binge what binge listen to a couple of others, and then it was like your one come up. I was like, oh, I haven't tried to, I haven't tried to change it, and then I started, and then that was kind of when I messaged you and said, yeah, thanks, you're doing it. That was actually really good. Where well, have you been? Mate. Where have I been? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Todd, Todd uh, Conklin is very good. Um, Todd, Con- I've, I've listened to a few bits of Todd. Um, I do like him. He's very easy to listen to. He's a good lad. I'm hoping to go to an event later on in the year, which he's speaking at, which would be amazing if we can, um, if I can meet him. But I like his stuff. Yeah, there's a, there's, I think Safety FM is, uh, is part of the okay. organisation that do Todd the Toddcast or whatever his is. Um, so that's quite a good one for, um, yeah. for any yourself and any other listeners that want to kind of get some more and there's a gentleman i think safety on tap i think it's called he's from australia i can't remember his name but his is quite good um mm-hmm. i remember he messaged me a while ago uh a long time ago if he's listening he, he might might message <laughs> me again tell me to bugger off but um he messaged me a while ago because i used to say i think i used to say in my intro like this is most probably the only interesting health and safety podcast in the world and um it was just a tongue-in-cheek kind of statement but he challenged me and messaged me on linkedin he was like actually uh mine is also very interesting and <laughs> i never heard i never heard of his at that point but it is a good podcast uh, would, would colin Nottage have something to say about that then uh, yeah, well, his, he, he stole the phrase and called his uh, the interesting oh, it, podcast. Yeah. No, I don't know if he did steal it from me. I'm joking. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's loads of stuff out there. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's actually, I, I'm, I, why have I missed out? I've literally, the last six months, I've only just discovered podcasts. So I've, I've been listening to the, the safety podcast, um, Richard Collins, Colin Not Did You, and then Todd Conklin. So I'm working my way through those at the moment, and my only limit to that is time. Yeah, there's, there's more and more coming source. all the time. Yeah. yeah, there's more and more coming. I, every day there's like a new podcast coming up. I think the Justice League of America, uh, Justice League of Safety, or whatever they're called, they've just a group of safety professionals in America. They've just started one as well. Um, so yeah, when I started, there was a handful of people. Um, do you know what so, Sonny Gopal's podcast was really good? I think he stopped doing his now, and I can't remember what that was called, but his was really good from a behavioural base safety point of view he had professor scott geller on who i've mentioned a few times in the podcast and that's really good that was like a five part episode um and he's he was really good so i like sonny's as well but sonny stopped now i think um, i think he does do blogs and stuff but he stopped his podcast yeah, yeah. um Anyway, stop telling people to go and listen to. I'll stop telling people to stop <laughs> going and listening to everyone else's bloody podcast. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I kind of firstly wish you every bit of luck in your future career. And if you need any kind of support, I'm sure I'll I'll be willing to pass you on to someone who listens to this podcast that's much more intelligent than me. Um, hmm. But no, jokes aside, if you need any help, drop me a message. Uh, you know, kind of tag me on on linkedin or something yeah, oh, so yeah. many people in my network that are just absolute geniuses when it comes to this stuff mm. um, that help you out yeah. and you know what i i think as someone who is just putting their foot in the, into the the kind of industry i think you've been extremely brave to come on a podcast that's all about health and safety it's a fair play to you mate uh, <laughs> a lot of people yeah. i message that say look i really want a couple of people have messaged me saying oh, i'm new into the career and thanks for your podcast and i say oh come on i really want someone who's, who's like fresh in um to talk about it and they're like no no i'm not coming on so yeah, thank right. you very much for coming oh, on yeah thank, yeah thank you for having me james it's been an absolute honor um yeah. really has and um yeah thanks for your podcast so, um, oh. Stop it. Absolutely brilliant. But, um, oh, stop it. Yeah, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah and, and congratulations again, uh, both on the diploma and the child. 
Yeah. Well, it's, it's, when, when's it June? When's it June? Sixteenth of okay. August. Ah, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, but God. COVID is uh is is throwing a spanner in the work. So I yeah. am talking about risk management. Here is a. a what I would probably think if I put my health and safety professional hat on a very reasonable control measure, but as a first time father, something that's really upset me, um, I'm not allowed to go to any of the scans until this COVID thing is over. No meetings, no scans, no heartbeats, no nothing. So I'm lucky to have been to the first scan, lucky to have heard the heartbeat, but Mm -hmm. I'm not allowed to go to any of the stuff. Now my wife has to go on her own, which I I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a control freak. I like to get really involved in everything. Yeah, yeah. That's really got me down. But uh, yeah, so, so is, is that was that your decision then, or was that the, no, the, the, that the hospital? Advice? The hospital made the decision. And said that because of the COVID nineteen to to limit the spread. And no unnecessarily people. You're not allowed to take, yes, exactly it. You're not allowed to take any guests with you whatsoever. So we're hoping that she'll be able to like record the video um, whilst of, of the next scan. And I'll ask mm. her to get me a photo as well. So um, she'll do that. But as a good example of, of kind of, you know, managing risk sometimes it's just shit. And, yeah, and, and yeah. whether, you know, no matter what you come up with in the future, Steve, or whatever, anyone else listening, one day they're going to implement something that people don't like. And, and I think that's yeah. a prime example. Because at first, my gut reaction was, what a load of shit. I need to be able to come yeah. to my, my future child scan. And then I had to stop myself, sit back and think, do you know what? Managing the risk is not, that's quite a good, that's quite a good yeah. way of doing, of managing the spread. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think this COVID, this whole COVID thing has been fascinating from a for safety professional point of view <laughs> to see how they're managing it. Um, people's my, reaction as well yeah yeah there's another thing is, is how the people are dealing with it like the, what was it sunday they the pack the parks all across the country were packed weren't they and yeah like have you been reading the news or listening to the news yeah yeah As, and it's interesting from a be- from a behavioral point of view like you're saying you're quite interested in that stuff is that yes. Is, is all this kind of panic buying thing. And I, I, I genuinely don't think it's a panic buying problem. I think there was at, at one point, I think maybe a lot of people panicked and brought mm, yeah. maybe loads more than what they would ever buy, you know, stockpiling mm. toilet roll and stuff. But I, I don't think that's the problem now. I think the problem is, is, is everybody is shopping more. And I yeah. think everybody is buying one or two more of everything that they buy because they go into the shop they see the shelves are empty and i i did it you know i went into the shop last yeah. friday i got my diploma results i was very happy i wanted to get a beer right so i go into the shop it's it it is like scarily you don't empty. need an excuse to buy more beer <laughs> <laughs> you do not well, need to <laughs> i would normally because i if it's in the fridge i'll drink it right so i would normally only buy about eight cans or eight tops like a pack two packs of four yeah, that yeah. give me going saturday and sunday or if their bottle is like probably six or whatever but anyway that's all i'll ever buy so anyway i go in the whole shop is empty like not just the bread milk and meat oil it was every single shelf was was just cleaned and i was like what and i rang my wife and i'm going down i'm like if the fucking beers are is like this i'm gonna lose my shit all i want is some chocolate and a beer galaxy chocolate which is what i i eat gone i was like taking a piss that was gone so i was already i was already pissed off got to the beer aisle it was like cleaned and uh, I couldn't get the beer that I wanted. So I ended up trying some old speckled hen, which worked out that I really like. So old speckled hen, lovely. Yeah. Bit more expensive than what I normally get, but oh well. So anyway, it worked out okay. But I ended up buying I, can't, I have three four packs instead of two four packs. Why? Yeah. Because I thought, well, next week when I want a beer, it might not be I there. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't think it's a, from a kind of I don't, I'm no behavioural safety behavioralist kind of psychologist no. expert or anything like that. But from all the books I've read and podcasts I listen to, mm. I look at it. And I think what I did that's the problem is buying one yeah, more yeah. of everything. You buy things that are there because you think it might not be there next time. Yeah. It's yeah. not a bulk buying problem, I don't think. Mm. Um, we've, after, had, we've had a, a surge on fridge freezers, believe it or not. 
Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> I wow. heard that. Yeah, I, I get that. Yeah, we've um, we, we, I went shopping the other day just before the baby came here, and there was only the premium nappies left. You're finding all the expensive stuff left. Yeah. left. So I've had yeah. to get as many as I can get. And like you say, it's like, oh, if I come next week or get an online shop, I'm going to substitute or not have it. So yeah. I've had to buy the premium brand nappies, which are way overpriced. Yeah. Just to make sure that it's there. So I get that. Yeah. Yeah. We, oh. we, um, our next door neighbor's got a baby and we've, we've been given, we, we found out about our baby just before Christmas. So, um, it was before this and a lot of people have given us a load of stuff and we've, and given like five or six packs of nappies that we're not going to use for like five months time so we, we kind of said to a few friends of ours and we said to our neighbors like look we've got these nappies that if you want them you can have them yeah. we're not using them because you know you go to the shop like you just said and it's gone and yeah. i think you're right i don't think it i don't think it's people going in and buying hundreds of packs of nappies i think it's people buying one or two more like you've done and like i've done yeah. but yeah it is fascinating from a point of view anyway we will uh we'd end up having a whole nother podcast about i know yeah yeah i wait that one with bated breath <laughs> <laughs> let me just press not, not that we're getting bored of hearing about covid19 but anyway yeah we um i'm working on something with uh with three gentlemen at the moment about doing like a little panel weekly panel about it not not so much about covid but about the subjects around it um and, and we'll go from there but keep your eyes out we might be um I think it will come out probably next Monday and then we'll, pro I think we'll do one, one a week from, from now on. And then once this dies down, we'll probably cut it, nip it in the bud. Depends how successful it is. If people like it, I might do it monthly after COVID settled down. Mm. Just to get some ideas out there for people, help people. And there's a lot of businesses that are panicking and, you know, the three gents that are coming on, I'm just going to play host basically, but the three gents that will come on, um, you know, to be honest, when this podcast come out, they would have been coming out anyway so oh, right. everyone, yeah, everyone yeah. will be like oh we know about this um, but yeah just for your information basically okay. well, um, yeah. yeah so these three gents they own they own businesses and and so I, I just thought and I was talking to Jonathan about it it was his idea and we were just saying you know it'd be just good to just bounce back ideas off each other do it at a recorded conversation publish it and some people out there who are struggling right now might go do you know what? I didn't think of that let, let's get it and just but you know it it's difficult because I, I don't want people to kind of take our advice with gospel you know it's just it's, it's just yeah. a, it's just an idea it's just an opinion if you don't like it go to the government please just follow the government's advice we are not the government um so yeah. i'll be i'll be very clear before we start <laughs> the podcast as a host that that the government's advice is is the one you should be following, not some jumped up twenty nine year old and a couple of business <laughs> owners on a podcast. You know what I mean? Right, Steve. Thank you very much for coming on the podcast, mate. Yeah, thanks for having me, James. It's so much appreciated, and I'm yeah, brilliant. Thanks, buddy. I've loved it. I've loved it. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Stephen. I really enjoyed it. Such a lovely guy, like such a really nice bloke. Really interested to see what happens and kind of join him on his journey as he progresses through his career in health and safety, which you know, I hope he is successful in. And um, I'm sure we will see much more of him going forward, especially now he's doing podcasts and stuff as well. He's interested in all that. He's been messaging me since we spoke about podcasts, etc. So keep an eye out for this guy. I think he's going to be something big in the future. If you enjoyed this episode and you're listening on iTunes, give us a great rate and review. It's just really nice thing to do. And I feel like you're a nice person. You know, most people that listen to this podcast are really nice people and they leave us rates and review. You don't want to be that one listener that's not doing it, do you? That would just be just be horrible which is must, it must mean that you're just a horrible person which i don't think you are i don't think you are so give us a rate and review to show us how nice you are nothing to do with the algorithms or anything just like, i think you're nice and i think you deserve to people to know that you're nice anyway I'm trying to use like moral pressure to pressure people to 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 like the podcast and do all these do all the rate and review things, you know. It sound like a chip. Well, it's much more um, much more effective than just asking them. It's like applying pressure. 
under social constraints. Anyway, before I was rudely interrupted, where were we? If you do any of that stuff, under no pressure whatsoever, then you can screenshot it, share it, tag us at Safety Rebranded on Twitter or Rebranding Safety on Facebook and LinkedIn. Let us know and we'll give you a shout out and say, this is how amazing you are. This is how amazing this person is. Look how nice he is or she is or anyone is. Anyway, I'm going to go now because I've lost my train of thought. I'll catch you next week in the podcast. Safe.